You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. About 10 days ago, four men were paraded by the police in Imo State as some of the previously unknown gunmen who have set police stations on fire. As soon as that happened, the family and friends of the man on the white shirt complained that he was unjustly arrested. They said he only came to Imo State to prepare for his father in father-in-law's burial and they began a campaign for his release. And Plus TV Africa ensured justice was done. Now, the good news is that he's now free. And the founder of Behind Bars Human Rights Initiative, Harrison Guamishu, who worked for his release, is joining us this morning. Good morning, Harrison. Hi. Uh, good morning. Um, the last time we spoke, Mr. Ibe was in police custody on allegations that he was an unknown gunman. But today he's a free man. I isn't that so? Confirm to us if he's actually out free and the process, you know, that um, led to that. Okay. Um, the family called me a few days ago. They took me first today and said that um, Mr. Kashmir has been released from custody. Yeah, because... When he was arrested, he was detained at uh, the state CID or Wery, where he was incarcerated. Then, before we took to uh, social media, because social media has been a powerful tool for us to seek for justice in Nigeria now. Uh, when you put up petitions to offices, it takes years before they can act on it. But just a tweet or a post on social media, the authority responds, you know, uh, faster to us. So when the tweet was made out and post was made out too, um, I you your office your tv station also interviewed me on this program too it was after the interview uh that we they were moved from Poweri to first cid abuja all of them were moved to abuja transferred to abuja where they were detained in abuja and um we quickly reached out to the complaint response unit abuja um who assured us that after investigation and um, if they found out um Kashmir and others were not involved in the uh, attack, uh, they would be freed. So, uh, the first day I got a call from the CRA office to confirm if the young man has been freed. And I called the family to who also confirmed that Kashmir has been released from the police custody. So, he's free now and um, he's out of custody. Okay, is there any, um, the process, of course, that led to him, you know, being arrested and incarcerated and uh, uh, yeah. All of that was he charged for anything, or he was, or he was just held um, on suspicion? He, he, was, he was not charged. There was no charges against him because nobody charged him. He was he was arrested by the police. He was paraded by the police at one of the hoodlums, and he was also released by the police too. Nobody charged him to court, and um, and nothing. Nothing was. So how about the other four men who were, you know, pictured with him? Do you have any yeah. um, information regarding um, their whereabouts, if they've been released as well? Um, for now, I, I don't even know where these four men are right now. I don't know. I can't even say this is where they are. Mm -hmm. But um, we are meeting with Kashmir by tomorrow, who will now give us details of where these men are. Uh, like the family of the one on Dredge, who is a Baba, uh, reached out to us yesterday and said they've not seen their son. So. We are also reaching out to the uh, CRA office in Abuja with the pictures of these boys and their names for them to be able to help us look for these guys to know where these guys are, are kept. Well, let me let me understand exactly what this is. So, so you're, what you're saying is that there are certain people, four or five of them, who are yes. currently in police custody without any charge. They've just been picked up. Um, yes. Maybe you know suspected of of one crime or the other, but you know Kasmerna has obviously. Um, you know, his case obviously shows that he, he wasn't, you know, charged with anything. Yes. And so the yes. reason behind the suspicion and the reason behind yes. his arrest in the first place makes absolutely no sense. So there's four yes. other guys who are just in police custody with no charge, with nobody also thinking that they should be released. These are just few of them, the one we have seen on social media. There are many of them who were arrested in Oweri and who are currently languishing in the police cells. Yes. There are many of them who, uh, who were arrested in Oweri. Um, the, the stories coming out from Oweri is such stories that um, you would not even like to hear because many of these guys were picked up from the streets. They were picked up. They were not involved with the um, killings, burning of police stations, but they were raided and you know detained and, and, and sent to prison. 
So it's just these are just a few people who were able to who the police paraded and we quickly saw the pictures and families reach out and and they were released. So we are many of them to who were transferred from away to force headquarters at Abuja. I don't know what they are doing there, but I currently there are many of them who are in force headquarters at Abuja. So um uh, Frank Mbadi, first uh, police PRO, we I think he's the is best in the is um uh, it's, it's, it's better for him to reach out to, uh, maybe you guys can reach out to him to, for him to explain to Nigerians and also to the world too, why bring, uh, picking all those guys from away to Abuja, those people who were arrested innocently, who were not involved in the attack. Yes, we, we actually did an interview the police PRO in Imo State a few days ago and asked him, you know, about Ibe Kashmir and the other four men who were pictured, you know, to be alleged unknown gunmen and his response was that you know that's what they do they pick up people based on certain intelligence and they find mm. out at the end of the day whether they're innocent or not and you know we, we put the information before the police PR rebella Okana and emo state you know telling him that lots of people have spoken up to say this man it, you know, works for an oil company, he's a respectable man in society, he has a family. And the police PRO told me that all unknown gunmen, all kidnappers, all have families who love them, and that, you know, that was no excuse, um, you know, of his innocence. So really, we have spoken to the police, but hopefully we can get them um, still on this matter to get more information on the facts of this particular case. But looking generally at what happens in Nigeria, how people are picked and just languish in police custody how would you um what would be your assessment of this particular situation with ibe kashmir would you say he was just lucky this time around um he was lucky because the social media um helped him so much um if there was no social media i don't know where ibe would have been today uh, for me too i was picked up four years ago um in 2011 and i spent four years in prison by sap picked me up and i was arrested and where i spent four years in prison so i Yes, there was no social media power like that for people to voice out for me and the rest of them. So, so imagine if Ibe was picked up in 2011 or 2012, where the social media was not too, uh, the presence was not much in Nigeria. Ibe would have spent six years or seven years in prison. But social media power, the TV station who reached out, everybody were involved, and Ibe was released. If people were silent of, uh, because of, if people were silent when Ibe's case uh, came up to the public, Ibe nobody would have known where um, eBay is today. So so for a case like this now, is it? would you advise people like this to sue uh, for unlawful arrest and, and some, you yes. know, other uh, similar uh, uh, charges? Yeah, I didn't hear you. I'm asking, you know, for a case like Kash uh, Kashmir, is, you know, would you advise persons like him to sue the police? Is it, is it possible that you can sue and, and uh, get compensation? Yes, we, we, because we have to do that, but the issue here is that the judiciary, uh, they are supposed to be the last group of the common man, they are on site. So where can he start from suing so the police where the court are on site? So you can't do anything. So if you are arrested unjustly, I want to sue the police for, uh, for keeping you in cell for years or for months or for days. The courts are on strike. So nobody, where can you sue them? It's only court can, that's where you can be able to get justice. But the courts that are supposed to be for us, the common people in the street, they are on strike, they are not working. So for now, nobody is suing anybody. So his days in the police, because he was paraded by the police spokesman, the Bala who said uh, they, they picked up people. He was paraded by Bala and, and named him the, uh, one of the hoodlums, you know. So uh, after his ask from police, the lawyers are supposed now to file a civil suit against the police. But... Because I was strike, uh, nothing is working. Everything is, mm. is down. So, so last question for me, um, Harrison. Because of the nature of our society, how we know that people can just get picked up randomly for doing nothing. Yeah. You know, if, if someone listening to us right now finds himself or herself or a family member in the situation that eBay was a few days ago, you know, being in prison or being in police custody for no cause, what do you advise them or their family members to, to do immediately to make sure that they're out and safe? Okay, um, if one, one is for, for, for me to get a lawyer. Okay. A lawyer is supposed to be your defender who comes to the police stations to hear from you and see how it can affect your release too. But right now, what we do is to 
um, we have the police, the police team have what they call the police complaint unit, um, where they, where they, um, uh, where you can complain, either you call or send SMS to them and they will respond to you. The complete response of the police force is effective. Yes, I can confirm that. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, do image making for them, but we have been working with them and they have been effective. Each time somebody is picked up from the street unlawfully or unjustly, we put up a call to them and they will respond um, to Just a minute. So the CRA can office I, should be... Um, Harrison, do you have the number of that complaint unit? Um, I have them, but I think I'm going to send it um, to you people after the program. Okay. So, yeah. Well, you the know, email number, the WhatsApp number, the phone calls, um, they are very, very effective. They yeah, will probably, you know, need to uh, do more publicity for, yes, you they know, do. On, yeah. on that regard. You know, but it's also, you know, tr it, 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 hard to imagine the class of police officers that make up the response team and then the ones that are on the streets. You know, if, you know, they mm. uh, aren't, you know, going through the same trainings uh, to understand that people shouldn't just be randomly picked up. Um, 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 for, for no reasons. But anyway, thank you very much, uh, Harrison Guamishu, for uh, your time you. this morning. Thanks for speaking with us. And of course, uh, we hope that there's many and many others who can be set free and allowed to go home when they've, uh, when they've been picked up for absolutely no crimes. Thanks once again. Thank you, Harrison. Yeah. And congratulations. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, stay with us. Uh, we're, of course, uh, taking a short break. When we come back, Wally uh, Scott, I was going to say Wally Spots, Pretty much same. Wallace Scott will be joining us.